uh, just again put ourselves in that other person's place and see that uh, we can never know all the reasoning. We can never know what's back of the attitude of that person. We can never know uh, what's really going on there. And so as we do that, uh, we can be more forgiving. And also, as you said, meditation and prayer always plays a part. And the deep breathing calms us, and then the meditation itself gives us answers. And we can ask specific questions in meditation and get those answers. The other thing that we can do that's very useful, I think, is in modifying behavior, which we use in new thought, is the use of affirmations. Mm -hmm. And the use of affirmations are simple, short statements. And I think the one we used last Sunday was that I'm centered in the, in the spirit of forgiveness. And so if, if we find ourselves in an environment that is, is negative, we can use these simple statements and we begin to... Uh, change our way of thinking. And we spoke earlier in the program about this concept of forgiving and forgetting, but one of the things that we touched on uh, last Sunday was that we don't ever really forget because our subconscious retains mm -hmm. all of these experiences. And if we can change the way that our subconscious mind reacts to the circumstances of life, then we're able, as we change our, as our conscious mind deals with the difficulties of life, then the subconscious mind will bring into our consciousness or into our awareness right thinking. And <laughs> what happens for most of us is that as soon as we get hurt or angry, then that, that, that issue of unforgiveness becomes a part of us because it immediately springs forth out of our subconscious mind and our conscious mind begins to behave in, in that negative way. But if through affirmation, through prayer, through medica meditation, not medication, <laughs> through meditation and through centering, uh, ourselves, we can redirect our conscious mind, then the behavior of our subconscious mind changes. And that therein lies the real unique thing about new thought metaphysical philosophy in the, in the Christian tradition. Because one of the things that new thought, new thought teaches us is that by conditioning or changing the way that our conscious mind operates, we can influence the way our subconscious mind operates, and our subconscious mind can bring back into, springing back always into our conscious mind, the positive and affirmative aspects of life. And certainly if we can cultivate the spirit of forgiveness and this awareness and consciousness of forgiveness in our conscious mind, in our daily minds, in our daily lives, then our subconscious mind will begin to behave in like fashion so that when we're faced with these hurtful situations, immediately what will come forth from the subconscious is, uh, is forgiveness yes. and empowerment and strength and overcoming in the face of the adversity that we have, in the face of the pain that we have, in the face of the suffering that we have. And then the suffering and the pain melt away and we are empowered and strengthened. It's a yes. wonderful process and it's, it's very fundamental to our teaching. Yes. That's, uh, that's true, and that's so well said, because and uh, we need to really remember those things. We need to um, realize that we're setting a pattern and uh, building a hologram, as it were. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, then it becomes a habit. There's a groove, and then it just uh, we keep doing it the same way. So then we can um, have a mindset of forgiveness, or we can have a mindset of belligerence. And whichever, and life is a series of choices. It's whatever we choose. But if we, if it becomes a way of life for us, then um, it's a very wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be wonderful? And I think those who are watching our program who have uh, situations where they just are not able to forgive and let go, mm -hmm. if they would begin to build upon this consciousness of of forgiving and create a forgiving nature and a forgiving way of thought and and a dynamic of mind how their lives could be changed mm -hmm. and how those pr painful experiences of the past and the hurts of the past could melt away and how much more positive and affirmative their life experience could become. Yes, and as you said, it's totally a mindset. And so if our mindset is that we're going to forgive because we, that's, how we, that's how we live, then that's, that will just come naturally to us. And if our mindset is we're going to lash out, then, then that's what we're going to get. But um, it's really, like everything else in life, it's our own choice, and we can have that choice or not. And um, as we, as we, t the audi our audience might just look at their own lives and see 
where they've been most happy in life, and they've been most happy when they've not been hitting out at someone else, but just letting things be. And uh, it, it is a, it, uh, it's a spiritual act, isn't it? It is a, a, a truly spiritual act, and it is a, a spiritual act that, as you said in the earlier part of the program, that transcends all of the religious lines, mm -hmm. that all faiths teach us that, yeah. and all faiths see the value of it, and all spiritual leadership and, and spiritual tenet has that as a foundation because of the intrinsic spiritual value that it has, and the value that it has on our spiritual uh, being, well-being, on our physical well-being, mm -hmm. and upon our mental well-being. And this issue of forgiveness is just probably one of the uh, uh, pinnacles of, of, of the uh, qualities that we can use to improve our lives. Yeah, oh, totally, 100%. And there are many wonderful books now that are metaphysically oriented, but there's one by Dr. Newton who uh, kept the record of all the different, of the various people he regressed into um, past lives. And as he regressed those people, they saw a pattern in their lives. And this pattern went on for many lifetimes. And I've been told that it usually goes on for four, at least four lifetimes. And then it either clears up or it gets much, much, much worse. But uh, we might look at life in that way and, and uh, say, well, we don't know what these people who are hurting us have caught, has how they've been hurt in the past or how we perhaps hurt them. Mm -hmm. And everything is a series of um, cause and effect. And if we know that everything is a series of cause and effect, then uh, we can just look within ourselves and try and see what we might have done to another person at an, in another time, in another age. And, and I think that goes a long way. And we can all do that. And we don't have to believe in reincarnation to, to believe in that way, mm -hmm. that everything is a series of, all of life is a series of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And one of the wonderful things that we know from Christian tradition and the teachings of, of the great way of Christ Jesus is that, that that law of cause and effect, while it's universal and true always and everywhere, mm -hmm. can be circumvented the minute we change our way of thinking. Yes. And of course, one of the, me the great messages that he brought was that by loving and forgiving, uh, seeking and accepting mm -hmm. forgiveness, we can circumvent the causes of, of anything and uh, the effects of anything yeah. because <laughs> the causes, the ca this law of cause and effect continues to operate until we learn the truth. Yeah. And the truth is that we don't have to subject ourselves to that if we change our way of thinking, if we align our thought process with the power of God, if we forgive ourselves and forgive others, seek forgiveness and repent, uh, that is to say uh, resolve not to do it again, and in that process of repentance or deciding not to do it again, we have resolved our mind and we've resolved the problem. Mm -hmm. And so we can actually save ourselves untold sufferings in life and, and experience and in lives or, or daily life by simply changing our way of thinking about ourselves and about the past. And when we do that, we're transformed and we transcend the effects of these various causes in our lives. Yes, and we can see the difference right away. We can see the difference in how we feel because um, everything is fight or flight or stress uh, activated. And so if, when we're not forgiving, we're stressed. And when we are forgiving, then we're relaxed. And so we can see the results immediately. When, and so we can also look about us and see that those people who really don't forgive at all, um, it shows in their bodies and, and it takes its toll. It takes its toll in their bodies and takes its toll in their life, doesn't it? Yeah. And it affects those around them because yeah. so many around us are so affected by us. Yeah. And when we think of parents and, and spouses and, and relationships, we're touching so many lives and so many of us are touching are negatively affecting our own life because of this, this withholding or lack of forgiveness, but we're also touching so many other people's lives because they're experiencing life along with us. And it's tragic that we're sharing our, our, <laughs> our suffering and our grief so, uh, so much with them and we're impacting their lives. So it's not only ourselves that we're affecting, but it's others as well. Yes, the people we love most would be affected by it most. And so we're doing them a disservice as well as ourselves as well as just the people whom we're not forgiving. Because, um, the, again, most people, when they do things, they really don't know any better. And even those who steal, they, they don't know any better. And they have, uh, it, it's, 
we, we should never be judgmental. And if, we, if we're not judgmental, then we are being forgiving because they go hand in hand, don't they? They do. One of the things that we say to people is that rather than judging a circumstance or situation, simply responding to it by saying, well, isn't that interesting? Yes. <laughs> and uh, isn't it interesting that they would do such a thing? And, and then from that, isn't that interesting, then begin the process of letting go of, of the animosity or the anger or the hurt and understanding that they do what they do or they say what they say and we have no control over mm -hmm. it. Well, I think you live that in your in your own life uh, very well. I don't. I've never heard you be judgmental nor unforgiving of others. And really weird things have happened in your life, I know. But yet you are totally forgiving of the persons who have wronged you. Absolutely, and and it's important. And as you know, I've had as like as many people lots of experiences that have been uh, less than positive, but. It, it's never important, or it's never required mm -hmm. to reconcile mm -hmm. in order to forgive someone. Mm -hmm. it, that it, It's possible to forgive someone and then to go on with your life yeah. and perhaps not interact with them. But the real important thing is, and if you do reconcile, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But the important issue is to get beyond the hurt and yeah. to, do the, to forgive. Yes, to not send out negative energy to that other person. Because when we send negative energy out, it boomerangs right back to us. And so we know that, but I think if one has a loving, kind heart, then they just automatically forgive. And it's not because they, it's a matter of self-preservation for them, although on the bottom line it is. Mm -hmm. Letting go. Letting go yeah. is always a difficult thing for all of us in all of our aspects of life. And uh, Dr. Freelander and I have been sharing with you these concepts and ideas about forgiveness. And we invite you to examine your life and examine your way of thinking and determine whether or not you have a forgiving nature, and if not, cultivate one, because this spirit of forgiveness and this consciousness of forgiveness will empower and strengthen you. And we hope that you found this information useful, and we look forward to seeing you next time.